Welcome, everyone. Welcome welcome back to another edition of FSI's NASCAR DFS Pick Show. I'm your host, TK Nation 47, joined with Mega Roller 31. Mega, good evening. And um, how is Nashville Speedway treating you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I had a really good combination for the truck race. Like, I had Gutierrez and I, I had, um, you know, oh, the, yeah. the right guys. I just had them in the wrong line. And I had, like Bodine in one of them and I had Heim in another one and they just it didn't work out like if I combined like honestly I was like too off from winning everything and I had them all in like the other lineup it was just one of those things and then it was it's finished was a little goofy like I yeah I, I pretty much broke even I thought Sheldon Creed with like really good practice speed there would yep. fare really well and then he got wrecked so that kind of hurt me um i was a little bit off on um value play the guy that i picked because he started 30th and then start like he was the cheapest guy so i figured you know and and he did have some good um average running positions in previous races and then he just kept on going backwards but then there was a big wreck so then through attrition he ended up where he needed to be so you know all's well then so but that was a hard one because you had like so many different guys that could have dominated there um yeah and it's the it's same thing here. It's not like a, a huge dominator race. There's only 180 laps for that one. So, um, you know, there wasn't a ton, but it was when one guy gets out there and does that much. And if, you know, kudos to Al Geyer for a masterful yeah. race. But if, if you don't have him, then you're pretty much um, out of luck. Yeah, that's what I ran into, too. I had one lineup in uh, my three, you know, different cash lineup builds that I usually build for the multiplier lineups and one had old guy and that's the only one that cashed. So, <laughs> um, kind of what we were dealing with in the Xfinity race, uh, truck race was pretty fun to watch. I, I enjoy that series thoroughly, probably going to be my favorite of the two. Um, maybe even three, uh, cup series hasn't really brought us much. Um, looks like the pricing in this slate kind of crazy with a couple of 11 K drivers. Now, do they anticipate Kyle Bush missing qualifying or spinning out and qualifying? Cause 11 K for Kyle Bush, man, that's pretty steep. Yeah. It was quite interesting there. It's like they had a crystal yeah. ball, but um, right. no, the pricing, everything came out beforehand. So this wasn't like the stupid thing they were trying earlier in the yeah. season where they had like the after qualifying slates. Nobody played those. No. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get into um, let's get into it. Nashville. I figured I'd lead off with Kyle Bush because that's going to be the talk of the slate. Well, let's just check on him real quick before we go back into the top of top of the board. Kyle Bush starting 36, 11 K just play. Yes and no. Um, <laughs> here's a few things. Like I have him as a prime because I'm not an idiot, and it's like it's, it was the same thing I debated with no with um Ty Gibbs because I knew he was going to be, and I put the notes in the Xfinity yep. race that I, I knew that he was going to be super chalk, and I, I don't think you needed him today. Obviously, here's the thing. Okay, Kyle Busch, he was great in practice here. Um, really fast car spun out, starting in the back. But friend of the program, Richie Martin, guy I work with, actually had a very big, big hit um, a couple of weeks ago and um, DraftKings. So kudos to him. He and I were discussing before he left today that the when Kyle Busch drives in this pedigree car, he wrecked Junior one of the first times he drove it. And ever mm -hmm. since this car oh, yeah, has been it. cursed tires have fallen off it like it just like it has mechanical failures so if you believe in voodoo then <laughs> this is not the play for you but right. if you're looking at a really talented driver who was super fast in practice who is starting dead last and can go no place but up i think you play him yeah this is a cash block i mean you have to admit that you play him as a cash block. So it's like um, FanDuel now. We're picking five drivers. <laughs> right. Yeah. If, you, if you're if you playing cash games, you play Kyle Busch. You just block block the field from, you know, wiping you out with the with the optimal Kyle Busch lineup. Um, and if you're playing GBP and you want to get different and you try not to have that much salary off the top of your lineup getting taken out, 
and you try to get multiple dominators at a race like this where track position's king, um, you can you can you can potentially fade. Um, I get it. I'm gonna be all in. Uh, that's just typically how I am um, as a as a multi entry lineup builder. I'm gonna be all in with Kyle Bush as like a probably a 55 percent play, a little bit more um, than the field. I would imagine he'd be around 50 percent in most GPPs. So I'm going to try to get a tad overweight and see what happens. And maybe I can get the optimal in the uh, 35 if he wrecks early with the voodoo that may, that may come up, but um, optimally, I think Cal Bush probably going to be in the optimal lineup. Now, starting out on the pole, Denny Hamlin uh, and Joey Logano uh, starting out first on the front row, any super love here for the first two guys? I think Hamlin's going to be very, very chalky just because, like, with the clean air getting out there. But I think he kind of inherited this spot. I don't think he really right. earned it. So, I I don't know. Like, there's a cash build he falls right into. And and, and that's what I currently have with Kyle Busch and, and, and some of the other um, guys. But I I don't know. I'm, I'm going to have to sleep on it and, and think about it. Logano, no. Um, I like Logano. Um, I know that he's good at, at tracks like this. And But 21st, and like you can see, I put on the far right, the practice um, speed where they ranked. He was 21st. I don't know. I, I think there's much better plays um, in the 9K range that I would like to consider. Yeah. Now, typically what we saw in that truck race is the front row dominated uh, most of the race. Um, and then in Xfinity, you know, Riley Herbst fell off and AJ Allmendinger led for a little bit, but then once he got into some of that bad air, it was really hard for him to get back up to the front. Um, I could potentially see that happening here in the front row with the Xfinity race. And I think the dominator is probably going to rest between pick three and nine. Uh, there's a few guys I like there for potential dominators. Uh, but I think Denny Hamlin probably leads the front portion of this race. Um, when I thought of this track over the course of the last two races uh, that we watched, I thought Atlanta. So I'm thinking it's not like, Atlanta this it's year. Like, it's a tire wear of Atlanta, but it's the configuration of Phoenix where they like right right start finish line they're like four five eight wide and then yeah. they like all it's, go back together right but but that concrete surface of atlanta old atlanta before the repave right right that's kind of where i was going with my thought process heading into today so there's a, cu- a few guys based on atlanta results that i like denny hamlin at atlanta has two top fives in a lot in his last five races I'm not sure which one of those is the repave, but um, apparently this is a horrible venue to watch a race. According to Stevie Joe Sampson, one of our viewers today, uh, the Xfinity one said it's like not a, not a fun place to go. So yeah. Yeah. It didn't look like too many grandstands looked like a lot of infield, which was sold out. So yeah. And and I like what they did with Phoenix and there and Nashville is a beautiful area where they like to kind of took up the stands out and put like grass and stuff and people could, maybe that would make it nicer. But anyways, um, yeah, I get what you're saying there with Atlanta and like tire wear people would be good, but I don't think Logano falls into that. Yeah. And, no, I don't have Logano or and, Hamlin as those two kind of drivers. And going to our next guy, Kyle Larson, he's got a really bad relationship with this tire. So I yeah, I, I think he's going to be chalky, and I think that he's going to be popular. And, yeah, he, he's, like, dominated at tracks like Phoenix and Dover, which are very comparable. But right. I think that he runs these tires too far down and blows one out and, like, yep. either gets damage or – I just see calamity here. So I have Marsh's cash, but I'm really thinking at the price tag, he, I, I can't play him and Bush in the same lineup. So he's probably a GPP. Now, you know, I've been a proponent of most weeks on that Larson fade, especially at that price tag. Hasn't been the dominant car that he was last year in this next gen vehicle. I think it's a, a process that his team and himself are going through with this car. So I'm going to go heavy on Kyle Bush, low on Kyle Larson uh, for dominate for my um, 11K exposure. 
Uh, next up to me is Chase Elliott, 10 7. I don't mind Chase Elliott, but the practice speeds were concerning. Um, he does, he did have a little bit of success at um, Atlanta uh, with three top tens, but I don't know. I'm not feeling Chase Elliott here. He's not on my he's not on my radar. How about you? Same thing. Like you can't play everybody. GPPs, yeah. he's fine, but I don't think he's making a cash build. Right. Daniel Suarez, 7,700 coming off of that win on uh, that was the dirt track, right? No. No, it was uh, Chicago, not Chicagoland, Gateway. Gateway. Thank you. Iowa, right? Iowa. Or, was that or was this Sonoma? Or did he win Sonoma? This is Sonoma. He won Sonoma. Okay. All right, this is what happens when there's two weeks off. <laughs> yeah, when you have like a just a dirt truck race in between. So, yes. but but here's yes. the thing with Suarez, like I I didn't play him in that race because I'm like he's starting too far forward. There's no way he can't hang up there, and that's exactly what he did. He ended up winning the thing. Yeah, do you think he can do it again in this type of track? No, but I, that's why I don't have him as a fade. I think he's interesting in GPP, but I don't feel comfortable in a cash. Same. Definitely going to be low, 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 low ownership in the MME style format uh, on Suarez. 7,700 is the only reason why I might have a small sliver of ownership, but man, I don't think this is the track or the time to be on Suarez coming off a win, two weeks of celebration. Uh, I don't, I don't like it starting fifth. Um, Ryan Blaney high on my list uh, here for potential dominators in this race. I love the price tag at 9,500 overweight tomorrow on ryan blaney yeah and, and i get it i have him as a gpp just because he just can't finish a race like he, he does well sure. and it would have surprised me if he works his way up and leads like the end of stage one and throughout stage two That's but then something with. happens and he fades away and, and towards the final and doesn't end well i mean he might be able to get you enough points if he does get up there and lead he's decent with tire wear tracks i, I think so yeah, yeah I, I, I like him but i don't know if i he's a cash play but i think he'll be lower own so i think he's definitely a great leverage play there at that price right i think blaney is the kind of driver that it's either gonna like you said get out to the end of stage one and lead stage one into stage two and then something happens caution comes out green flag pit stops happen something random will happen um or he's going to be the guy that comes from out of nowhere in stage three and take the victory so uh, that's where I'm at with him. Uh, Chastain, another one of these dominators on my list of um, probably 1B to the Blaney that I like here inside the top 10 is potential dominators. Uh, Chastain, I believe he ran really well this year at Atlanta. I think he had a top five, uh, but he does have four races and a couple of laps led. So, I mean, on Chastain, how about you? Yeah, I like him. I just, I can't find the, I'm like a couple hundred dollars short to get to him to where I want to be in cash. So I'm going to have to take another guy out of my lineup and and I don't know who that is. So I might have to settle for Hamlin here, but I, I so hope I can figure it out. But he's definitely right now in my GPP build. Yeah. Because I want exposure. But my main cash, I, I just am a few hundred short from getting him. Yeah, I, I really like Chastain. It, it, like you said, the 10-5 is a little hard. That's why Blaney makes much more sense to me um, as my guy here in the top 10. Kevin Harvick, 8,500. Ah, practice looked real bad. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to have much Kevin Harvick. I think I love him in GPPs Dude. because he was Mr. Atlanta. This is true. This is true. This is a veteran racetrack. Yeah. Paul Geyer, um, you know, dominated that race veteran veteran guy and i don't know how he ended up here like because i didn't watch qualifying i know it, it rained and stuff and maybe this was a product of the formula or is a like, if, track a, yeah a product but like but then again like it's he's the opposite of truex and it's gonna be hot and he's better with colder tracks with more grip and truex is better with <laughs> slicker looser tracks so that right. might vote against him but the, the race is starting at like five o'clock um eastern sure. time and it's in tennessee which i don't i don't think it's all the way out to the central time zone i think it's still in the eastern time zone but still that mm -hmm. seems like you know the yeah, race is three hours into it you're going to start getting the sun to to go down 
so I don't think it'd be racing under lights, but it's going to be significantly cooler than if they started this race at high noon. So um, that might help him later in the race. So he's very interesting play. Not saying put him in your cash lineup, but uh, definitely um, put put him in a. If you're doing like twenty lineups, have him in a couple. Okay, you like you like Harvick. I like Blaney. Uh, Bell, here we go. Ninety one hundred. Uh, been racing well of late. Any interest in Christopher Bell? I'm interested just because the Gibbs cars have all been fast here. I think they all kind of figured it out. Um, looked good in practice. Like he's qualified about where he practiced. My only concern is Christopher Bell has qualified so well, so many races and just faded back. Not to like down into like the 20s or 30s, but he's still, he just doesn't ever usually seem to finish where he starts. So I wouldn't surprise me if he finishes like 15th here. I don't think he's going to lead laps. I don't think he's going to be a dominator. So I, I kind of got to put him in GBPs. Um, I like the speed and everything, but you, you need more more than just like to have a little bit of speed here to actually bank points at 9,100. Yeah, I'm looking at the radar now. It looks like there's a potential for thunderstorms tomorrow. Uh, so whatever kind of grip that was laid down today is going to be taken off the track if it rains so we could have you know i don't know a hot muggy slick track tomorrow or if it starts raining we might have cooler temperatures um martin truex jr you alluded to that track temperature that he's predominantly good at 9700 uh any love for truex you know with the big announcements of him coming yeah. back to you yeah. know, joe gibbs racing yeah, I, I think this track suits him pretty well. He was, it's, he was um, on my radar. Yeah, definitely. I think he's a, he's a cash play. Um, sorry, I like him more than Blaney. They're comparable in price. I like yeah, that. You know, you've right. got like five or six place differential points here potentially. I think he mm-hmm. he can have a decent day. And like I said, all the the Gibbs cars, like you got one on the pole. Bush was fast in practice. All these guys were top ten. They've got something figured out here. So yeah. I like it. You know, and here's the thing. You can go with Bush and then maybe both of those guys, Blaney and Truex, and still be able to find a way to have a, a, a workable oh, yeah. lineup because of a different because of a couple of value plays that we'll talk in a little about in yeah. a little bit. So I think it's very viable to have both these guys in your lineup with the still with still some of the chalk. Um next up is Almarola at 7500. I, I don't know. Uh, isn't this a track of it's a short flat track isn't that kind of like new yeah. hampshire where he does really yeah. well like i think he's he's a hampshire, sneaky new player. Hampshire's like half concrete too so yeah i could see it yeah i don't know so 11th is a little too far forward for me okay if it's an attrition battle i could understand it but just on pure racing i don't think his team has the speed okay yeah, that's fine. I get yeah. it. Bowman okay. 8,700. I mean, you got to talk to Bowman and Byron together. Hendrick Go stars didn't look as good, but Byron was like fifth in practice here. So I think, and, and Byron has a propensity on short tracks to get up there. And I, I could see him leading at, at some point, whether it be through like pit strategy or something, he's, he's got a pretty fast pit crew and a pretty uh, strategic crew chief. So I like him and, and Bowman always just seems to have like floor. Like, so yeah. he's always like, just feels like a cash play for me. Like, he, with, like, like he, he always, he always has the potential to win. Like he's on a team that that's good. He, he's a, not a driver. That's like never always chasing that first win. Like Daniel, like Hemrick was like last year in Xfinity. Mm-hmm. He's just one that I think that, is just kind of always there. Like he starts 12th, you might finish 10th, but if that's the floor you need in a cash game and he fits in your your last guy in, you have 80, 88 left, then take him. He, he's yeah. more, he's safer than Harvick at like 85 or um, I read it's a little bit further on down. I was going to say, I, yeah. I kind of like Reddick a little if bit you, more. If you could get to him, but. Yeah. Yeah. But 87. And if he falls into your lap, I think it's, and, and do you really anticipate high ownership on Bowman? He's not usually a guy that goes high owned. He is just because I think of the Hendricks car aspect of it. Uh, okay. I think, I think people look at him and be like, he's 87 compared to some of the other higher guys. He's in a Hendricks car. He was 15th in, 
in practice speed. He's starting 12th and he has top 10 um, upside. So I, I think that's why he, he's going to be higher. But if you look at it, I only have like probably eight guys here that I feel would be highly owned besides the yeah, three chalk sure. guys. Yeah. So, so your theory is that people probably go Larson Bush and then they drop straight to the 8k, 7k, 6k range. Yes. Okay. That I, that I understand that kind of build. Um, and here I am going from Bush to, t- to that 9k range trying to get as many of those 9k drivers so it looks like i just love a different range than probably the preferred chalk which is great for gpps um heading into tomorrow byron i probably i I like bowman consider you know i don't know byron won at atlanta i know it was a repave but he's performed well at that track before the repave as well um oh i I like i like byron better than bowman i'm just saying that bowman has a decent floor for you no, yep, yeah. And Byron has the off chance of issues and and done. Bowman kind of keeps the steady, you know, steady win the race kind of mentality. Uh Omendinger, 6,800. He's a fade. A I think he's starting too fade. far forward. Like he he looked okay at the Xfinity here, but man, I don't just... trust anyone that race today. Yeah. Pure purely based on just what they went through. It is a completely, completely different car, and yeah. Yeah, and they're beat up. I mean, it was a brutal race. We had multiple drivers in the infield car center um, after the race. Almendinger literally icing his feet right after he gets out of the car, and now he's going to race a longer race? Yeah. Uh, no thanks. Uh, I, I think Almendinger is headed for the back, and yeah. uh, I'm not going to be a part of it. Busher, GPP here, the next guy, just because he's like, he started too far forward, I think. Yeah, practice speeds didn't look too good for both him and his team owner. Um, not sure where I'm at on Busher. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Reddick, I do love a lot of Reddick, 8,900. Really, really good track that suits his eye. Race today, and I know it's going against my theory that I just had on Almondinger, but. Reddick didn't really have much going for him today. He wasn't broke racing. the engine. Yeah. So he, he missed a shift and broke the engine. I had to put a new one in it. So yeah, he had to start from the back. So it was just a disaster, but this is a different car. So, yeah, but I didn't, I didn't think the high groove was like the really preferred one here. I think the lower one is. So I think that might be a little detrimental, but it definitely with the place differential here in the price, I think, um, and third fastest in practice, he, he's definitely has enough floor to be considering cash. Yeah, I, I like the car. I think that's the main difference here. If he can survive on, uh, you know, just his body, if his body can hold up, I think the car gets him to that top 10, even on maybe a top five. And I love the place differential for the price. 6,300, Cole Custer starting 17. Yeah, he's just having a horrible season. He's like, he's like third to last in points this year. This just like Stuart Haas, like you said, Vincent Harvick doesn't really have speed so gpp to fade yep no no chance i even think haas is dropping custer at the end of the year uh mcdowell front row motorsports 5700 is a great price tag it's like I, average like i, I want to like play him I, just, I think he's averaged like a 12th place finish for like the last two few races like he's been consistent and staying up here so and i know some of the tracks have suited him better but I, I think True. you can't really write him off here. I think he's a GPP at 5,700, especially if you're going up for like Larson and trying to get like three three kings in your lineup. You're, you're going to need somebody like this. And I think he's got enough floor to be, um, I don't know if he's cash play, but I think he's definitely solid in GPP. Yeah, and five races at Atlanta, he has an average finish of 26th. Hmm, maybe the shorter, flatter angle of Nashville is better than the high banking of Atlanta. So I think it's more his recent form than any of his track history is what we're looking at. You got it. 5,700. I'm in 8,300 Kurt Busch. I actually don't mind Kurt Busch in this spot here in this 8,300. These 23 XI cars are like, they look light, light. They're light versions of the Gibbs cars. And I'm sure they share notes and tech and stuff. And they're owned by Denny Hamlin, who's on the pole six in practice. He looked good. 83 signed me up. Yep, I'm in. It's cash played to me. 
Uh, he's middle middle part of my cash lineup. So I, I like Kurt Busch right here. Good price tag. Austin Dillon, 7K. He's been pedestrian. Like he, he might yeah. put together a good race now and then, but he right. has no floor. No, he's not trustworthy. No, not trustworthy at all. Like your GBP, low ownership. If you want to take a shot and the off chance he, it's his day, go for it. But man, you can't put nothing on it. No. Well, all right. Justin Haley, 5,900. I'd rather be inconsistent. He's been top 20 last few races. So, yeah, he's yeah, starting he's a little too far forward. I'd rather, yeah, play McDowell. And our time has started. All right, Corey LaJoy, 5K. No. Spire, so, nope. Uh, Starting too far forward. Yeah, this one's too far forward. Um, Eric Jones, 7,300. Yes. Yeah. Like a lot, I think he'll be popular 13th in um, yep. practice. So, yeah, cash play. Yep, cash play. Eric Jones is a solid bet tomorrow. Uh, Austin Sindrick, 7,900. Intriguing. Practice looked ugly. Practice yeah. looked ugly. Yeah, but I, I think he's intriguing here, especially if he starts in the 20s. I think he has some upside for a GPP. But 79 is going to be like no man's land. So Yeah. Yep, price tag, another issue. 7,100, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. just signed himself a new contract for JTT Doherty. Doherty. He's on the outside of looking in on the playoffs. Like, he's way far down there. He needs to make up some ground. So I, I think definitely he's going to be, we're going to see more aggressive guy here. This is a track where I think you can be aggressive and not pay the price for it. I know we did see some issues in truck and Xfinity, but they're not a skilled driver. So, and these new composite cars can take more of a banging. So I think I, yeah. I like them here as cash play. Yeah. If I'm playing two seven K drivers or even high sixes, like high, high sixes, it's going to be Jones and Stenhouse. Harrison Burton, 5,300. I don't play Harrison Burton, and it works out. Yeah, like he's getting better, but not yet. No. Nope. Nope. Brad Keselowski, nope. 6,600. Nope. Horrid practiced. He is dead. <laughs> Horrid. Fill in the blank last in points this year. <laughs> so, so bad. I don't like anything Roush Fenway tomorrow. Um, not going to lie. I mean, I might have a little busher because he's a little safer, but man, I'm going to be underweight on Keselowski. I hope he's high owned. Ch uh, Chase Briscoe, 81. Love him, and I think I might be the only one that's on him just because of the pricing. <laughs> but again, this is a track that's kind of like shorter around the, the turns, and it's a track where you're going to have to shift. And he has mastered the shifting of this car better than most of the rest of the drivers besides, I think, Logano um, seemed was decent because he won the um, where they had to do most of the shifting the first race at the Clash. So I think I am very high on him. He's going to be prime play. 16th in practice, starting down here, definitely can probably make it into the top 20, probably possibly a top 15. Sign me up. Yeah, so... You sold me. I'm going. I'm going to go ahead and go with some Chase Briscoe. Um, this could be this could be the uh, this could be the time to do it. So I'm in. Ty Dillon, 5500. Just need him Eddie to finish where he starts, and you're fine. 5500. Plug him in if you need that that yeah. value in your lineup, and you're good to go. He's in, he, if he's the last man in, I got no problems with it. Bubba Wallace, 6500. Here is your highest own play of the slate. Yep, he's going to be on the cover. Uh, just lock him in with Bush. Fast in practice, fastest guy in practice. Uh, had a little bit of an issue in qualifying. He'll be fine. Um, mm -hmm. Has the speed. He's a Toyota. He'll be up in probably top 20, top 15. Yep, he should run there most of the day. Um, yeah, just – and I think he's going to be higher on because of the price tag. I, I think he just – here's another cash block. And if you feel like you want a GPP fade it, go for it. But I wouldn't advise, I'd advise against it. All right, Cody Ware, JJ Yaley, two plays I'm out on. No, no, Yaley ran the Xfinity race today, but like, I don't, I didn't see if he wrecked or anything. Did he like start and park? He it looked like he was about to start and park, but then he popped out of there after like lap 30 and ended up finishing ahead of the, one of the value plays I played. So, okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, Todd Gilliland, 5,100. Yeah, he, I'll play him just because of the starting position, but yeah, he, he won the dirt race. Like he, he's a good driver. 
Uh, and this 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 car is better than where Ailey and Blicky and McLeod. So among this mud puddle down here, he's not as bad as the rest. Yeah, I can see him finishing ahead of like, you know, Harrison Burton, maybe a few guys that wreck out, maybe just Justin Haley or LaJoy if they have a really, really bad day. So he might gain like four or five spots. Not terrible at 5,100. Uh, Blakey, McLeod, nope. Oh. And then there's Kyle Bush. Yep. So that rounds it out. Yeah. Any final thoughts before we head out? No, I, I think, you know, it's, it's pretty, like you pretty much have two of your drivers. If you follow me with Briscoe, there's your third. And then it's mm-hmm. deciding on who, if it's Chastain or Hamlin or Larson or dropping down to like a Truex or a Reddick, you know, yeah, and then. Redick, Laney. Just yeah. see, seeing what you have left in the price range and you see who our cash plays are, just plug them in there. Or if you're trying to be a little bit more risky, finish off with a GPP guy. You see who our fades are. It's not that many of us. There's only six drivers, but um, yeah, I think, you know, we've straightforward slate. Yeah, drawn some pretty clear lines here for you. I think you have, yeah. And I think we're going to have ourselves a fun day tomorrow. Hopefully the rain holds off in Nashville after looking at the potential radar, looking at, um maybe some delays hopefully the track has lights i don't know if they do we'll certainly find out (laughs) that's always a question that bob pakaras gets every single sunday but hey um thank you for listening in everyone please like comment below with any questions you may have mega well done on the xfinity video uh this morning uh much appreciated the second time i don't know what happened i posted the exact same video the second time and it worked so it's youtube not me yeah yeah, I, I don't know. YouTube studio can be weird sometimes. <laughs> All right. Well, um, thank you for joining me late this evening. Well done on the video, sir. Um, you can always follow us on Twitter at TKNation47. That is at MegaRuler31. You can follow us on Twitter at FSI underscore DFS. The link to our Discord chat is in the bio. Come join. You get a free any update on projections if we get any kind of technician tech issues or you can get the our core lineups and chat live all day we got um all the way till five o'clock for making lineups so if you want to join us you can um yeah that'll round things out guys enjoy nashville speedway and mega good luck in your lineups you too